Okay, I am getting ready to go to Mount Everest Base Camp with a group. I am going to fly out today to uh, Kathmandu and then uh, my group arrives in a couple days and uh, I've got all my gear laid out here and I'm going to be putting it in my duffel bag so I wanted to do a gear lift we list. We go to Everest Base Camp twice a year, uh, usually in the spring, so around May and then which is pre-monsoon and then again post-monsoon which is in September, October, November, early November. And uh, they're both good times of year. What we're looking for is times when the mountains are clear and uh, we don't want to go during the monsoon season. So I'm going to go over the gear list. Everything that I uh, have here that I'm going to show you, I put in a large poly duffel bag. This is a North Face brand duffel bag and uh, I put everything in smaller ditty sacks. A, a ditty sack like this is going to give um, a better organization in the duffel bag. So I'll kind of specifically put things in the ditty bags um, based on what they are. While I'm over there I'm going to have a day pack. Mine's a little bit bigger because I am guiding so I have medical gear and other things uh, this is a 40 liter. You could get away with a 25 liter, 20, 20 25 liter uh, bag works well. It is a good idea to have a rain cover for that because then if it does rain, you'll keep your stuff dry on the trail. Um, sleeping bag wise, sleeping bag, I'm going to bring a minus 20. You could also get away with a zero degree sleeping bag. I just happen to have a minus 20 bag, so that's what I'm going to bring. But you don't want like a 20 degree warm bag. I have seen on other gear lists that we do uh, on YouTube, I've seen people comment like uh, there's blankets in the tea houses and this and that. I don't know, for lack of a better word, gross. <laughs> I'm not going to use some blanket that's in some tea house halfway up the Kumbu. Um, I'm going to bring a sleeping bag and I'm going to bring one because that's where you get your rest. That's where I want to stay warm. That's where I want to kind of snuggle in and be comfortable for the night, not be in some dirty tea house blanket, um, you know, with who knows what's gone on in that bag before you or that, that blanket before you. So I don't use anything like that. We do bring sleeping bag, a warm sleeping bag, zero degrees. If you run cooler, uh, in the evening and, and really want to stay warm, especially if you're going in October, late October into November, it's getting cooler then, and uh, a minus 20 degree bag would be good. So then as we go down the gear, I'm going to bring a couple, and I just bring two of these like poly type shirts, okay? These are North Face brand, uh, you know, they're going to wick the uh, moisture and that kind of thing and then I will bring a long sleeve shirt as well something uh, this is a merino wool uh, long sleeve shirt and a combination of that you can wear those day after day obviously it's a 15 16 17 day trek depending on how you go you can wash a little bit of clothes, especially the light layers like t-shirts and socks and underwear in Namche Bazaar and then you could hand wash them up in like a double day in Dingboche or We Stay in Farishe. You could do that as well. Uh, Mid-layer top, I'm going to bring a couple different options, one to hike in, one to have around the tea house. So uh, this is just like a insulated top with long sleeves. It's got a little hood for the trail. I'm also going to bring like a mid-weight fleece. Uh, top like this which is just comfortable to have and uh, sometimes I sleep in those as well uh, in the evening. I'm going to bring an insulated down jacket so I just bring a, a nice insulated uh, down jacket. You could use a th synthetic jacket. I do like a hood. Hoods on everything help a lot because you can uh, you know keep in the you know s stay warmer with it with a good hood. So a uh, good insulated jacket. Then I'm going to bring a shell uh, pair of pants. So in the event of foul weather, I've got a uh, shell pants that are going to go. Um, a rain poncho. Got a good rain poncho. You know, if it rains on the trail when you're hiking, you, you know, you can have all the good rain jackets in the world. But if, uh, if it does rain, 
a good poncho over you and uh, your backpack and everything else just helps keep you dry and your stuff dry and you got to kind of move so uh it's it's not going to matter if it's uh you know raining or not if it does rain you still got to get to the next village a couple of pairs of trekking pants i'm going to bring a a light pair of just khaki style trekking pants for the lower uh for the lower uh trail um as we're down lower in the valley obviously we land in lukeland it's nine thousand feet it's a little warmer there as we get up to Napche, 11,800 feet, Farishay, 16,000 or 14,000 feet, Lobache, 16,000 feet. So as we get higher, it's going to get cooler. Um, long underwear. I got a pair of long underwear here that I can wear with my shell pants or I can wear sleeping in, that kind of thing. Soft shell pants. I've got a pair of uh, these are cool brand that are just like a soft shell trekking pant so on those days where it's cooler temperatures during the day when i'm hiking i've got a nice pair of trekking pants uh to wear as i go uh, i've got a uh, beanie hat just a regular hat i've got um a few different neck buffs neck buffs are good to wear especially in the kumbu when people get the kumbu cough if you can cover your mouth and nose as you're hiking up into the upper elevations where that cold air is coming into your throat. Um, they do say that wearing a neck buff helps prevent that, but it also it can be dusty on the trail. There's pack animals, things like that. So I bring a few different neck buffs, a pair of sunglasses here. Always, always have my sunglasses. And uh, um, then I'm gonna bring a headlamp, um, maybe a spare pair of batteries, just a regular headlamp is good to have and for gloves i'm going to bring a pair of lightweight like uh fleece gloves these fleece gloves are um good to have just like a windstopper type fleece glove then i'm going to bring a little bit heavier pair of gloves these are more like a, a leather type uh, light ski glove i don't bring anything too too extremely warm on the trek ever space camp if you are tend to get colder hands bring something a little warmer uh, but definitely you want to have something to uh, also uh, um, hike in, something lighter. As far as hiking boots, hiking boots go, I just bring a pair of uh, high top. These are La Sportiva boots. They've got good tread on them. They're in good shape. Um, I've worn them a bunch of times, so they're, they're ready for this summer. And uh, I go through a lot of boots, but uh, these will uh, last me hopefully through the summer here. Um, and I always bring, like I have this here, uh, that I put the boots in um, when they go in my duffel bag because of, you know, they're dirty. They've, they've been hiking on the trail. There's yaks on the trail, pack animals, things like that. So I bring something to put them in. You can bring a plastic bag, a, a garbage, small garbage bag, uh, and that kind of thing. Socks. I like this mesh ditty bag, holds about half a dozen pair of socks. Definitely want to bring socks that go above the boot top, so like a crew sock is going to help you out as far as that goes. Uh, synthetic wool blends, uh, good to have. So again, you might be wearing these a little bit multiple days. A lot of the times with socks, I'll wear a pair to hike in, then I'll put a fresh pair on at the tea house uh, after I clean up, then I might air those out, wear them again, and kind of rotate them. Obviously, I'm not going to bring 16 pair of socks on a trek that's 16 days long. And maybe if I have a double day, I might wash them up and uh, and try to get them dry and that kind of thing. Um, I am going to bring a pair of regular kind of pants to wear around the tea house at the end of the day. So after I get to the tea house and I clean up, um, I'll be comfortable by wearing um, uh, just a regular pair of pants and, and uh, just kind of getting into my like warm, comfortable gear. I'm going to bring a good shelf jacket. So I have a, 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 ba a pair of pants and then a nice uh, Gore-Tex shell as well. What else do I got on here? Trekking poles. A uh, good pair of trekking poles. I like trekking poles that have the flip lock, uh, which is really important to have. 
You want to make sure that you have a travel adapter. Obviously, if you're going to be charging anything, a travel adapter when you leave the country. Uh, I use an all-in-one, can go anywhere in the world to make sure I charge my devices. Also, it has USB ports on it for charging, that kind of thing. But if you really want to charge above, say, uh, Namche Bazaar, uh, you'll have less and less power to where there's really no power. They'll have solar power that you can charge behind the desk at a, at a fee, like at the little reception area. Um, it doesn't charge very well. I recommend either bringing spare batteries for a camera or like my GoPro, I'll bring a bunch of spare batteries. Um, but then I'll also bring one larger size spare battery that's uh, uh, for charging. So an external charging battery. A couple other things I bring, I bring a, a small uh, uh, camp type towel and a mesh bag with a washcloth. So I can, if, I, if there are showers uh, up higher where they don't have towels, which is usually the case, um, I'll have those. I will bring a pair of shorts and, and something to sleep in, just like uh, a little bit of a long sleeve type uh, uh, shirt and a pair of uh, kind of boxer shorts to sleep in. Baseball cap. I bring two baseball caps, one that I hike in during the day, one that I usually wear around the tea house. I wear a baseball cap a lot. Um, and then uh, a couple water bottles. I bring a liter and a half bottle. You can bring two one liter bottles. I like Nalgene because we can uh, fill these with hot water. So you can have a hot water bottle uh, when you go to bed in the evening in your sleeping bag. And then the morning, it's usually a nice temperature to wash your teeth with. Uh, so that kind of thing. Sunglass case, I bring a little pack that I put some trail snacks in into my backpack. I got my belt here. I do bring a coffee cup and uh, with a lid. That's kind of optional as you like it. Um, I bring a, t a TP kit for my day pack. So in here I've got hand sanitizer, some flushable wipes, and a little bit of toilet paper. I put this in my day pack. It's always with me, whether I'm in Kathmandu or on the trail or at a tea house. Um, you're going to need to provide your own toilet paper. I've got a med kit because I am guiding. I've got a little ditty bag full of some underwear and some light layers, toiletry kit, and um, I think that about does it. Let's see here. You know, aside from a few personal items, sunblock, sun hat, sunglasses, you know, all that kind of stuff, obviously. When I go on a trip, no matter where it is in the world, and I'm, and I'm uh, um, out there and I'm getting ready to pack for it, I always try to think about the elements that I'm going to encounter. Warm temps, sunny days, I want to protect myself from the sun and be comfortable hiking in lighter layers. Uh, if it gets uh, precipitation, if it's going to rain, I want to protect myself from the rain. As it gets cooler, I want to protect myself from the cold temperatures and possibly the wind. So if you think of those layers from your socks and underwear out, all the elements that you're going to have to protect yourself from on the trail, that's an important way to look at it. You want to be able to wear layers so things can layer up and layer down if it gets warmer or if it gets cool, cooler. And uh, you don't need a whole bunch of layers that are the same layer because then you're just carrying more stuff and you're making a decision on which one to wear. Typically on a trek, on a climb, on that kind of thing, you are going to wear things day after day and you can't have a fresh pair of pants every single day on the trail. You know, you're going to wear pants for multiple days and that's why I'll you know, what I'll do is I'll, I'll wear my pants during the day. If they get wet or they're kind of dirty, I shake them out. I hang them out in my room or in the tent or wherever I am. And then I'll put something on that I wear in the evening. And then the next day I'll put back on my trekking wear, so to say, and I'll go along the way. So I think I've kind of hit it here for the most part. I'm going to get ready to go. And um, there's always a... a uh, important thing to think about when you are purchasing gear you know if you buy better brands they're usually going to fit better they're usually going to last longer and they're going to be made of better materials and it's up to you sometimes you can get away with a little bit 
uh, off brand or something that's not so high quality, especially when you're get, getting started out. But you have to look at it as an investment in the future. As you start to buy all your gear, um, it's going to last you a long time. And as you come back from a trip and things fit well, work well, you clean it up, you put it away, and it's ready for your next adventure. So we hope to see you on an adventure. Worldwide Trekking no, runs a number of Mount Everest Base Camp treks. I've been going there for over half of my life, and I love it. I love the people, I love the mountains, I love the culture, and um, it's a fantastic journey to Mount Everest Base Camp. And uh, contact us if you have any questions. I'm always happy to help. My office is open nine to five, Monday through Friday. And uh, you can contact us and we'd be happy to get you signed up and consult you on a trek to Mount Everest Base Camp and uh, anywhere else in the world that you might choose to join us. Thanks and have a good day.